Hey, you welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that you need to know as an investor. So for more videos just like this one, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into the video. The stock market has been looking pretty good lately, with the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 posting new records for the third straight trading day in a row. However, the Dow Jones was not as lucky, considering that the Dow closed lower due to some weak company earnings. But so far so good, it looks like 2024 is starting off rather strong. Another news update that you need to be aware of is Apple, because they recently reported another delay to the launch of their electric vehicle, which is going to be an electric full self-driving car, and it was originally anticipated to be released in 2026, and that was moved till 2028. Now, I am not surprised by this because I actually think this will be postponed even longer, maybe even till 2030 or even 2032. We're just going to have to wait and see. But honestly, Apple is coming really late to the game for this, considering that the EV competition is heating up rapidly and Tesla already dominates this market. Speaking about Tesla, what's going on with them? Tesla's TSLA share price recently dropped down to $207 per share, and honestly, I am using this weakness in the share price to buy more of this company. But let's talk about why this happened. Tesla released a downbeat full-year production outlook for the year of 2024, and this has been weighing on their share price, so clearly investors did not like the news. However, there is good news here because Elon Musk himself did officially confirm that the company's next-generation vehicle will come to the market in the second half of 2025. But before we talk more about that, let's talk about what they brought in in regards to their top and bottom line. Tesla reported top-of-the-line revenue of $25.17 billion, even though only $25.87 billion were their estimates. So clearly they missed their estimates by a pretty substantial margin. However, the good news here is that their revenue did rise approximately 3% from the same period a year ago. Now, from a profitability standpoint, they did release earnings per share estimates, also known as EPS, of 71 cents per share, which did miss estimates of 73 cents per share. And the company also brought in adjusted net income of just $2.486 billion, even though they were anticipated to bring in around $2.61 billion, according to Wall Street estimates. But Tesla did not only miss on their revenue, which is the top of the line, and their earnings, which is their bottom line, but they also gave lackluster projections for their full-year production numbers regarding their electric vehicles. A Tesla representative even said that the vehicle volume growth rate may be notably lower than the growth rate achieved in 2023 as our teams work on the launch of the next-generation vehicle at Gigafactory Texas, end quote. So this is sweet and sour news. The sour news is that the production volume is going to be lower due to some of their team working on a new project, and the sweet news is that a new project is coming, and that is going to be in the form of a new electric vehicle. In regards to the financials that they brought in, I think this picture really says it all. As you can see on screen, you can see their automotive revenue, their energy generation and storage revenue, as well as their services and other revenue, which is broken down very articulately on this graph. The company seems to be growing, 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 and then they are consolidating right now, so Tesla really needs something new to wow the market to increase their overall revenues, and that's exactly what we're going to get here soon. To continue the Tesla representative's quote, he says we are focused on bringing the next generation platform to market as quickly as we can, with the plan to start production at Gigafactory Texas. This platform will revolutionize how vehicles are manufactured. So two things are going on here. They are building a next-generation platform, which will make the creation of electric vehicles more effective and efficient, and they are also going to make a new electric vehicle, which will hit production in the second half of 2025. Now, my prediction for what this electric vehicle is going to be, which will hit production in the second half of 2025, is going to be a very affordable electric vehicle priced around $25,000. If I'm right and Tesla releases an affordable electric vehicle, they are going to be leagues ahead of their competition. Elon Musk himself, who is the CEO of Tesla, even said on the earnings call, and I quote, We are very far along on our next-gen low-cost vehicle. We are really excited about this. This is a revolutionary manufacturing system, far more advanced than any other in the world, end quote. And that's the key here. Their next-generation platform is going to allow them to create very affordable, low-cost electric vehicles. And once this happens, Tesla will become even a larger market leader. To further this point, earlier in the month, Tesla reported that they delivered 484,507 electric vehicles, which crushed Wall Street's expectations by over a thousand. And this actually represents an all-time record for a particular quarter for this company. And as you can see on screen, they are rapidly creating electric vehicles. Now the question is, can they sell them faster than they can create them? And honestly, I think they can do just that. Also, Cybertruck deliveries are doing pretty well. However, Tesla did not break out this total in its Q4 delivery update. The main reason for this is that the Cybertruck deliveries are still ramping up, to where Tesla themselves even said that the Cybertruck production ramp would take longer than their other models. So it makes sense why Tesla wouldn't release this during their quarter four report. 
Overall, I think Tesla is a great company and I am buying them on a weakness like we are seeing right now in their share price. But now I want to go over and talk about NVIDIA and why a lot of smart money hedge fund managers and money managers are buying another AI stock. NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA, is an artificial intelligence juggernaut and they continuously soar to new heights. But what's interesting is that lately NVIDIA stock has not been on the new buys by the best mutual funds. However, what does this mean for retail investors such as you and I? Well, clearly we should pay attention to what smart money is doing, and if they are not adding NVIDIA to their mutual funds, then what company are they adding? Unsurprisingly, we've seen these money managers scoop up Adobe to where they bought up more than $1.3 billion worth of this company. Recently, it seems Adobe and Microsoft have been some of the favorite stocks to buy from smart money. Whether or not you are a mutual fund manager, a hedge fund manager, or just a general money manager, these are the companies that smart money is buying and retail investors should pay attention. However, I don't want to downplay NVIDIA at all, considering that there are multiple funds with an a rating from IBD which hold NVIDIA. To where we can see 120 a rated funds holding this company, with another 88 a rated funds holding Adobe stock. Now, I do find it interesting that a stock like Adobe is taking away the limelight from NVIDIA, but in essence, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Adobe are fantastic AI stocks to hold. According to the article, Adobe is a market leader in marketing, analytics, and creative tools. And we also have a catalyst coming up for this company, to where the article says the AI leader will showcase what's new and what's on the horizon at the Adobe Summit 2024 in March. What's also interesting is that Shaquille O'Neal, the NBA legend, also known as Shaq, also known as DJ Diesel, is going to be there as well. He is set to speak at the Adobe Summit 2024. Naturally, this summit will feature AI experts and other experts from around the world, and I think this is going to act as a phenomenal catalyst for Adobe stock. So remember, that catalyst is going to happen in March. Adobe has also unveiled major audio updates to its tools to help filmmakers enhance their sound design. So it seems that there are a few catalysts coming up for this company, considering their Adobe Summit as well as them making further updates to their existing technology. In the end, this is definitely a company that should be on investors' radar, especially if it's taking away the limelight from NVIDIA, but I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Next up, we have the stock ServiceNow, ticker symbol N-O-W, which is a workflow management software company. ServiceNow posted better than anticipated fourth quarter results, and it provided a very good full year 2024 guidance, which caused investors to flood into this company, thus causing their share price to surge. The CEO of this company even said that generative AI is injecting new fuel into our already high-performing engine. He went on to say that this is a breakthrough moment, and I completely agree with him, considering that ServiceNow posted subscription revenue of $2.365 billion, equating to a 27% increase, which beat their forecast of just $2.32 billion. The company has also adopted 15 separate generative artificial intelligence use cases itself, and what I really like about this company is that they utilize their own software. Listen to this. This company focuses on workflow management software, and they are using that software to make themselves more productive. Their own software also gifted them a 52% improvement in the speed in which they can develop new applications, so clearly their software works. So not only did they beat in regards to their revenue estimates, they also have a fantastic 2024 forecast, and they are using their own software, which is making the company more effective and efficient. And that's why shares of ServiceNow are up almost 9%. The company has also been performing extremely well over the last 12 months to where the company's share price is up 73%, and I think this is a company that you as an investor need to be aware of. Speaking about companies that investors need to be aware of, let's talk about AMD, Applied Materials, and Super Microcomputer, which all popped in their share price recently. Shares of the artificial intelligence chip maker named Advanced Micro Devices, ticker symbol AMD, jumped by 5.7%. We also saw shares of Applied Materials, ticker symbol AMAT, gain 4.8% in their share price, while the server and data storage solutions provider named Super Microcomputer, ticker symbol SMCI, increased in their share price by 2.8%. What's fantastic about this is that if you've paid attention to previous news updates, we said to buy AMD as well as Supermicro, so it's great to see how both of these companies are up today. However, what's the reason for all of this enthusiasm in these stocks? Well, one of the reasons is that New Street, which is a London-based stock research shop, announced last night that they upgraded AMD stock from a neutral rating up to a buy rating with a $215 price target, to where they anticipate shares will rise by 28% throughout the year of 2024, according to the fly. This company also believes that there is further upside in all of the companies who are involved in the data center AI chip sector. However, like I've said in previous videos, and this company agrees with me, when we compare other companies to AMD, it seems that AMD has the most upside. According to their analyst, out of all of the semiconductor companies trying to build chips for artificial intelligence functions, it seems that AMD stock is the one with the most upside, and I completely agree with him there. 
And as the demand increases for artificial intelligence, this is not just good news for AMD, but this is also good news for applied materials, which builds the machines that build the AI chips. And this is also good news for super microcomputer, which builds the AI servers that incorporate the AI chips which are being built. So honestly, all three of these companies work together, and what's good for one company is kind of good for all of the companies involved. So if you are planning to buy AMD, feel free to look further into applied materials as well as super microcomputer. But that's not all. There's also another stock that the author of this article mentions, and he believes that it's an even better opportunity than AMD. The author says that personally, he is a fan of safety, and with a 22 times trailing earnings valuation, TSMC, which is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, looks to me like a safer play than AMD. So if you're looking for a few companies that are set to do extremely well in this AI revolution, please, I encourage you to look into AMD, Applied Materials, Super Microcomputer, as well as Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. Now there is another AI stock that has been doing exceptionally well lately, and that shockingly is IBM. IBM is a technology giant, and they recently reported better than expected fourth quarter earnings results. Recently, IBM earned an adjusted $3.87 per share on $17.4 billion for their fourth quarter earnings. And this is really good because that means they beat on their revenue estimates and their earnings estimates. As an example, for their EPS, they were anticipated to bring in just $3.79 per share, but they actually brought in $3.87 per share. Likewise, for the revenues, they were anticipated to bring in just $17.3 billion, but they actually brought in $17.4 billion, thus beating expectations in both their revenue and earnings, and that's what's causing the rise in their share price. But the news gets even better as IBM provided a full year forecast for 2024, where the company expects revenue to grow in the mid single digits while generating $12 billion in free cash flow. I know a lot of dividend investors like IBM, so if you are listening and you're a dividend investor, tell me what you think about IBM down below in the comments. Another company that had a great earnings report, which caused their share price to surge by around 9% is ASML, and their ticker symbol is ASML. This company is a semiconductor equipment maker, and they posted very strong quarter four results. Recently, their share price jumped by $68.92, marking one of the largest single-day percentage advances for the stock since November 10th of 2022. On that day, the ASML share price jumped by 15% after the company boosted its forecast and launched a $12 billion stock buyback program. But what's the bad news for this company? Well, they did release a subdued forecast for the year of 2024. Concerning their 2024 outlook, ASML expects their 2024 net sales to be similar to what they brought in during 2023. So clearly, we are not going to experience a lot of growth in this company. So if you own this company in your personal portfolio, this is still a fundamentally strong company. However, over the next 12 months, the share price might trade sideways or even drop a little bit due to these growth projections. But I would love to hear your thoughts about ASML down below. In other news, we saw Salesforce, ticker symbol CRM, and their CEO selling 15,000 shares of the company, which is worth approximately $4.2 million. And investors started to freak out about this and sell their shares. However, they are overreacting. If you're not familiar with the 10B5-1 plan or the rule of 10B5-1, here it is very simply. Essentially, this allows a major stakeholder in a company to sell a predetermined number of shares at a predetermined time. And the reason that this rule was originally implemented was to halt insider trading or even prevent executives from being accused of insider trading. If you didn't know, insider trading is when people within the company have a knowledge that people on the outside don't know and then they quickly buy or sell shares based on this knowledge that no one else knows except people within the company. Therefore, they have an advantage over people outside the company and that is called insider selling and that would be illegal. However, the 10B5-1 rule protects insiders within a company, and that's exactly what the CEO of Salesforce did. So literally, he didn't do anything wrong, and uneducated investors are just selling their shares for no reason because they don't understand. But hopefully you understand now, and you can actually use this to buy these companies when other uneducated investors are selling. Because honestly, nothing was done wrong here. The insider is not selling because something is wrong with the company. This was already predetermined ahead of time. If you didn't know about this rule before, hopefully now you feel more educated and informed. Now let's talk about AT&T stock and why their share price has been falling lately, and to no surprise, it's because of their Q4 results. AT&T's ticker symbol is T, and they delivered mixed top and bottom line results. For instance, the company's revenue grew by 2.2% year over year to reach $32.02 billion, which actually beat Wall Street estimates by $560 million. Honestly, this is good news for the company, but here comes the bad news. On the other hand, they posted non-GAAP earnings per share of $0.54, cents, which missed expectations of $0.56 cents per share. On top of that, the company's guidance is not very impressive, considering that they are guiding for adjusted per share earnings between $2.15 per share and $2.25 per share. The reason why this is bad news is because this is a significantly lower estimate than what Wall Street wants, considering that they call for a per share earnings of $2.47, and that's why the share price is falling right now. 
So not only did they miss on their earnings per share, their future forecast for EPS is also not impressive. Now, this is another company that passive income investors and dividend investors really seem to love. And honestly, this company is a great buying opportunity on weakness. Its dividend looks well supported based on the business's free cash flow generation, so honestly, this may be a good buying opportunity for you. But it's not all doom and gloom, considering that when the Federal Reserve decreases the prime rate and interest rates start to fall, this is going to reflect positively on the telecom giant's debt load. AT&T will not have to pay a high rate on their debt, making it easier to pay off, and that should reflect positively on this company's share price. The reason why it would reflect positively is that investors are going to get wind of this and then invest back into this company. That's why the author of this article concludes that the company's dividend is safe at current levels, and at and stock looks like a worthwhile buy right now, but always make sure to do your own research to make sure it's right for your personal portfolio. We also see a pre-anticipatory run in Intel's share price ahead of their quarter 4 earnings results, which we will talk about a little later. Analysts are currently expected them to bring in earnings per share, also known as EPS, of $0.44 cents on revenue of $15.2 billion. The reason why this has caused a pre-anticipatory run in their share price is because compared to the same quarter of last year, they reported just $0.10 cents for their EPS and revenue of $14 billion, so this is a huge improvement for this company. On top of that, the company also announced a catalyst for their share price, considering that the company announced the opening of its latest chip manufacturing facility in New Mexico. Intel is a semiconductor maker that is trying to claw its way back to the top of the chip world, but it is losing loads of market share from rivals like AMD and TSMC, which we talked about earlier in the video. Speaking about companies that are about to release earnings, we also have Visa, T-Mobile US, Western Digital Corporation, and KLA Corporation. With that being said, I would love for you to go ahead and annihilate that like button right now if you haven't already. Subscribe if you are new, comment your thoughts down below about any or all of these stories, and I will see you in the next YT video.